Now that we understand more about the qualities of a normal curve, let me show you how we can use what we've learned in our calculation of probability. Let's start with something we have seen before, which is the empirical rule. The empirical rule for a normal distribution states that 68% of scores will be within one standard deviation above or below the mean. 95% of the scores will be within two standard deviations of the mean. And 99% of scores will be within three standard deviations of the mean. This is sometimes called the 68, 95, 99 rule, also called the empirical rule. You may also remember the story that I told about stirring up a bit of trouble by saying that half of public school students are below average. That reminds us that the mean is the point below which half of scores fall. Therefore, when we examine a normal distribution, half of the scores will always be below the mean, and half of the scores will always be above the mean. We can use this information to answer questions about the proportion of scores between the mean and specific values. For instance, how far is the mean from a z-score of 1.50? Well, the z-score of 1.50 is 1.50 standard deviations above the mean. Or we could ask, what proportion of scores is below a z of 1.0? or what proportion of scores is below a z of negative 1.25. But to answer any of these questions, we need to know not only the empirical rule and that half of scores are below the mean, but all the finer gradations of probabilities that exist between any specific point and the mean. And to answer those kinds of questions, we're going to use a z-table. A z-table shows the probabilities between the mean and any specific two-decimal z-score. You have been given a copy of a z-table as part of your course notes. If we wanted to answer a question like how far from the mean is a z of 1.50, here's how we would do it with our z-table. Notice in the first slightly darker blue column underneath the z, we have a 0.0, .0 or one decimal point. 0.1, 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, etc. Moving across columns, we could add a second decimal point. To find how far from the mean is z of 1.50, we would simply move down this first column until we found a z of 1.5. In the next column, we see a value of 0 0.4332, which tells us the probability of a z of 1.50 is 0.4332, or 43.32% of scores. We can combine this information with what we know about half of scores being above or below the mean. So for instance, if we wanted to answer the question, what proportion of scores are below a z of positive 1.50? we would begin by identifying where that z of 1.50 is located. It is above the mean because the z-score is positive. Next, we could find the proportion of scores between the mean and 1.50, which we've already identified as 0.4332. We're looking for the scores below 1.50. We know that the scores from 150 to the mean are 4332, and additionally, we know that half of the scores are below the mean. We can simply add 0.5 to our calculation and come up with a value of 0 0.9332. 93.32% of scores are below a mean of positive 1.50. But we can answer other questions. We are interested in finding the scores below a z of negative 1.25. We would begin by going to our z-table to find the proportion of scores between the mean and negative 1.25. We find this as a value of 0.3944. That's the mean 
to our starting point. Therefore, because we know that half of the scores are below the mean, we will subtract that proportion from 0.5, leaving us a remainder of 0 0.1056. 10.56% of scores are below a Z of negative 1.25. How could we use this for a calculation? Using our business of the week, let's examine what happens when we make pineapple pina coladas. On a typical cruise, the Zodiac Thriller Bar uses 1,250 pineapples for pina coladas, with a standard deviation of 120 pineapples. What is the probability that a cruise will use more than 1,400 pineapples? We now know the mean, 1,250, the standard deviation, 120, and an x value of 1,400. And we want to find the probability of scores above 1,400. And as you might imagine, I have created an Excel spreadsheet that we can use to find these proportions. We will also answer questions like these. The price of pineapples has gone up. So Ted is considering ordering fewer, knowing that some cruises will run out. If he orders 1,200, how many cruises will run out? What proportion of cruises use 1,325 or fewer? What proportion of cruises use between 1,200 and 1,400? Or how many pineapples should he order if he wants 20% or fewer of cruises to run out? Let's turn to that Excel spreadsheet and see if we can find those answers.